first of all, his, his ability as a footballer. Um, he was in my, he was my all time hero before I uh, even played football. And, um, you know, the, the record he has 58, 62, 70, three World Cups. Which I say that the 1970 team was probably the, the, the best team ever in world football, in my, in my opinion. Uh, and I played with Carlos Alberto, who was, uh, came, he was also at New York Cosmos. And that's when I first really got close to Pele, when, uh, when I was signed for Cosmos in 1978, um, early 78, when I was at, uh, in New York signing the forms. And I found out that um, a video of the previous season when Pele played his last game for Cosmos 1977 when they won the championship of the North American Soccer League. And uh, I was just looking at the video to see which players I would be playing with. And I thought, well, he's playing up front and he's playing up front, but he isn't because he's gone. And I thought, blimey, I'm going to take Pele's place here. I'm a replacement for Pele, but, uh, so there's no pressure there. So that was my first first real um, awareness of, a, of, of him being in the, in the squad. In a winner. Without question, a winner, you know, you don't win three World Cup Cups um, without being a winner, without having the right attitude on the on the field and knowing, you know, Carlos Alberto and him uh, in New York, they had this this ultimate uh, desire to be a winner, even though they were world class players, they would never sit back on the laurels, and those were all they were all pushing to the next level, pushing, pushing, pushing all the time, and from my, from my perspective, that's what I wanted to to be there. That's why I was there. I didn't leave Manchester City for no reason. I wanted to, to win something somewhere else. I'd won something at the FA Cup final with Sunderland in 73. I'd won the League Cup final with uh, Manchester City in 76. And here is a new new adventure. And I wanted to win something there as well. So I was, I was on the same page as Pelé's attitude and be the best you can be. 100%. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an unbelievable achievement and I don't think it'll be a match for anyone um, because of the modern day pressures and the differences. But certainly Pelé was, it was a different generation, different kind of players, certainly different facilities. You know, the, the boots were, boots were uh, uh, heavier leather, the ball was heavier, the, sometimes the, the, uh, the pitches were a little bit different. Um, but, you know, he was still winning without question. Don't forget, three World Cups over, uh, what, uh, four, 12 years from 58 to 70, that's actually, yeah, 58 to 70, that's uh, 12 years. Well, his movement was terrific. I mean, we talked about Messi in the World Cup, about having this all-around vision. Uh, I don't know, some of the commentators kept mentioning there, you know, see how Messi walks around, he looks and looks, he sees, he knows what's going on around him. I would be perfect, Pele had that ability as well. Pele had that total ability. His vision was just extraordinary, even at the training pitch. You know, I, I played an exhibition game with him at about 83, 84, just after I'd finished and he'd finished. And he must have been then by, I would think he'd be maybe in his early 40s then. And uh, I played, me and him played up front, which was, it was ex-Cosmos against the current Cosmos. And um, it was just an experience, you know, he's, he kept shouting, chew it here, chew it, go there, go there, chew it, chew it. And all the time he was driving me alongside him, you know, and I thought, blimey, you know, I can take, I can take some advice from Pelé. <laughs> I think Pelé He's dribbling, the pace of his dribble and the fact that the ball never went more than six, nine inches off his, off his feet. You know, he's totally controlled, but he could do it at high speed. And that was his, that was his because he had low centre of gravity, because he's, he's only five foot eight, you know. He wasn't a ginormous, but what he did have, he had huge thighs. So he's, he's, he could leap like a salmon. And I think if you remember that 1970 World Cup, when he headed that one down, when Banks made that fantastic... Uh, save um, to stop the goal going in, but Pele had leaped way above uh, the defender. And when he scored the, the first goal in the in the World Cup final in that year, you know he leaped across from Rivellino, and he out jumped the uh, the Italian defender by a foot and headed it down in for the first goal. So he had this ability to leap, you know, from a standing start that is as well, you know. So that came from his athleticism and from his physique. Oh, Clan. Three World yeah. Cups, three World Cups over twelve years. And that that is some job to keep your level of performance at that high for that long um, and be a winner in the, in each World Cup final. And we've had some good teams. That Italian team that they beat in nineteen seventy was a real quality side. They had about five or six quality players in that side. Um, so that 
and the Brazilians came out and beat them. So when he won three World Cups over, over 12 years, but physically, mentally, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, injury-wise, you kept yourself. The only one he missed out was 1966 because he got kicked out of the game by the Portuguese um, uh, in, 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 the, in the World Cup in England. And who knows, it could have been four in 12, in 12 games, in 12 years. Dennis, my friend, is... Has- 